and welcome to our educational series on facial injections. This video is for nurses, doctors, physician assistants, NPs, or anybody who is doing facial injections on patients, and for patients if you just want to learn more about what is being done to your face if you ever get facial injections. We're going to talk to you about Botox, fillers, all throughout the face, safe techniques, anatomy, what to do, what not to do, and how to manage complications should they happen rarely. We're going to go through all the details and break down these videos one by one based on the important anatomical regions of the face and talking about the procedures that are most popular and common today. Today's video we're going to start with frontalis Botox, which is the forehead muscle. Forehead muscle Botox is one of the most common Botoxes, and the reason that is is because it's one of the places where the lines start the earliest. Sometimes patients as early as their young 20s start getting lines in the frontalis muscle. So what we want to do is we want to be able to reduce the wrinkling of the lines without making it look like a frozen or flat face. Sometimes when you inject too much, you can't raise your eyebrows and it looks like you've had too much Botox. So we want to prevent that by showing you the safe techniques to do so. First, we need to talk about the anatomy. So the frontalis muscle is a large muscle in the forehead of the face that is gaping and bridging the entire forehead. It's the only muscle in the forehead in certain parts, so you have to be very careful. But there are innervations of the other muscles, such as the procerus and the corrugators, towards the medial aspect of the forehead. So in the medial aspect, you have to be a little bit more careful about injection versus in the lateral aspects. You also have to be careful. This is the only muscle that lifts the forehead, so there's no other muscle that lifts the forehead besides the frontalis muscle. So if you inject too much Botox, you can inadvertently drop the brow and that is one of the worst things that you can do by accidentally over injecting Botox. So be very careful when you're injecting Botox. What I like to say is you should be very low dose with your Botox and you should stay in many precision points. So this is kind of the areas that I like to inject my Botox in the frontalis muscle because what it does is it allows a general weakening of the entire frontalis muscle without over injecting in any one specific area. Products that I like to use. You can use Botox, Dysport, Xeomin, or even the newest one from Evelis. But the key is understanding how all of them are very similar in their units. 300 units of Dysport is more or less symmetrically equal to 100 units of Botox. Understanding that is very important when you do your dilutions to treat them similarly. I like to do about one unit of Botox or 1.5 units of Botox per injection site when I'm doing my frontalis muscle. I usually dilute my 100 units of Botox in 5 cc's of saline, so that gives me a 1 in 5 dilution. That 5 cc's of saline in the 100 units of Botox means you're approximately 20 units per cc or about 2 units per 0.1 cc. 1 to 2 units is how much I place in each of these small units in the forehead, so about 10 to 12 units across the forehead is usually what I innervate. Inject. Now, where to inject, where not to inject. I like to inject in the frontalis muscle in a very diffuse pattern. I don't like to do bolusing. Some people inject large boluses into the forehead in one or two specific areas. I'm not a fan of that because you don't get the smoothness throughout the forehead that I like to do. So what I recommend is small bolus patterns throughout the forehead. So what we're going to show you now on this beautiful patient is how when she raises her forehead, you notice how she has a lot of lines along her entire forehead. Now I'm going to be marking out the specific delineations of where I'm going to inject in her forehead like you see here. So go ahead and raise your brows for me. So I always have the patient raise their brow as high as they can and then I mark the apex of the brow on both sides. The reason that's very important to mark the apex is because you want to understand where the highest point of the brow is so you don't alter that positioning. Then go ahead and raise one more time. And then what you do is you're going to mark throughout the frontalis in small regions to understand how you can micro influence the anatomy. You don't want to overdo your Botox in the frontalis. You notice how I'm staying away from the glabella region specifically because I don't want to drop her brow medially. Sometimes if you do heavy Botox here unintentionally you can drop the brow. But if you do heavy Botox here laterally you can drop the brow. So we're trying to stay in a very diffuse area throughout the entire forehead. And again about one unit on average with each of these marks. These are the areas that she'll get the most benefit from, from injecting small aliquots, one to two units max in each of these areas. I prefer staying closer to one unit, especially if it's a first time patient, always go low. You can always inject more later, but if you inject too much, it's quite a problem. But with this Botox specifically, we want to make sure that we're staying high along the frontalis, staying diffuse along the frontalis and not injecting too much into one area, and that we are being very cognizant of the procerus and corrugator muscle. 
So we're all done, we're just cleaning her up now. And so after the injection, the ideal is for your patient not to have any bruising, no major bleeding. Of course it can happen. The big thing is compressing. If you get any bleeding, changing your needle often so you have a less dull needle, less pain to the patient, less likelihood of bleeding, and making sure you're injecting exactly as much as you think. It's really easy to over inject, so be very careful. One to two units max per area along the frontalis muscle. This is the safest technique for Botox and this is how we can prevent any significant issues. And we'll show you her one week results now as well. So you can see how her Botox, comparatively from her before to her after, have improved significantly and dramatically. And show how you can soften this region with just a little bit. So about 10 units of Botox, equivalent to about 30 something units of Dysport. So low dose in the forehead is very important don't inject too far lateral or too far low because these are the regions that you can start to get an issue of dropping the brow and you want to be very careful in the glabella region because you can accidentally weaken muscles here that you may not intend to if your patient doesn't need it. Usually Botox is used in consertion with the forehead, glabella, and crow's feet along with the lower face and the neck. So if you're a safety person and want to do your procedures with a low safety margin where you take care of your patients with the most amount of safety, this is for you. Stay tuned for the next video.